Secretary Clinton is entitled to uh, you know, her point of view. Uh, my job today is to focus on the impeachment trial. Uh, my job today is to put together a team that can defeat the most dangerous president uh, in the history of the United States of America. Why do you think the secretary is still talking about 2016? That is a good question. Ask him. Democratic presidential candidate Bernie Sanders firing back at former rival Hillary Clinton. That's what he was uh, referring to there. Sanders responding to new comments from Clinton. We first told you about this story yesterday morning. Clinton confirming to The Hollywood Reporter that she said this about Sanders in an upcoming documentary. We'll show you this quote. He was in Congress for years. He had one senator support him. Nobody likes him. Nobody wants to work with him. He got nothing done. He was a career politician. It's all just baloney and I feel so bad that people got sucks, sucked into it, end quote. All right. Joining us now to discuss all this is Richard Roth. He's a Democratic strategist. Richard, thanks so much for joining us. Thanks for having me on. Those are some interesting words from uh, interesting. Secretary Clinton. Uh, can you tell me why are they coming out now? This was, you know, so, we're, we're past so, the 2016 election. So Hillary Clinton is still fuming underneath about what happened to her in the, in the 2016 election. Uh, she believes, and, and a lot of people would support it that but for Bernie Sanders she would have been she would have won the election so he made a lot of he made a lot of hits into her into her into the voters into her image into everything so I think there's a lot she, needs, she hasn't finished her therapy yet because it's been four years three and a half years but there's still a lot in her and, and I do believe that she actually believes it I think she believes that Bernie was a hindrance to the entire process and which resulted in her essentially not being the leader of the free world. All right, well, let's let's hear from her. She did respond uh, with a sort of non-apology. Here was what she said, quote, I thought everyone wanted my authentic, unvarnished views. But to be serious, the number one priority for our country and world is retiring Trump. And as I always have, I will do whatever I can to support our nominee. Is this how she's going to really support a nominee by potentially tearing down a known frontrunner? You know, the interesting thing is, it is authentic. I mean, she does, believe, rightfully or wrongfully, she is pissed off at Bernie. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's like the kid who got a trophy and three years later you're like, that was my trophy. <laughs> and so she's pissed off at him. But I, I think what's, we, this is going to pan out. I cannot imagine, what, one of two things is going to happen. Either Bernie's not going to be the nominee, which is most likely, or if he is the nominee, my guess is she's going to sort of stay to the wayside because she doesn't really want to um, hurt the chances of, as she said, retiring Trump, which is a pretty, which is the Democrat, the Democrats main goal here. Well, critics are saying that Clinton's attacks and Sanders' feud with Elizabeth Warren are part of some larger Democrat strategy to keep uh, from the nomination, keep Bernie from the nomination for a second time. Even President Trump, he's tweeting about this earlier this morning. He said this, they are taking the nomination away from Bernie for a second time rigged. So, Richard, why is the Democratic Party so afraid of Sanders? Because, frankly, Bernie Sanders cannot win the election. He is just too liberal. He's too far left. The only people that can win the election are the centrist Democrats or a Michael Bloomberg, who's a centrist Democrat, but is not, not necessarily in the debate yet. But a Bernie Sanders, Bernie Sanders is going to have the hardest time of all of the candidates mm -hmm. to win. And Trump is egging him on. He wants Bernie to be his candidate because a lot of people out there do not, do not ascribe to his theories, his, his belief in his, his liberal beliefs. A well, lot we of have the first do. time that CNN poll that came out today, the national poll that says that uh, Sanders for the first time is, is climbing higher uh, than Joe Biden. It's remarkable. He is. Uh, but but I, I, what's happening, I believe, is the liberal part of the, the liberal, if you will, wing of the Democrats is essentially speaking out. Yeah. Uh, he cannot, uh, I, I don't believe he'd ever be able to defeat, defeat Donald Trump. And if the goal is to defeat Donald Trump, you need an Amy Klobuchar, you need a Michael Bloomer, you need a Joe Biden. You could have an Elizabeth Warren, but she's got troubles too because you can't be that far left. A lot of people are, are, are concerned about the, 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 the way the Democratic Party has gone left. Okay, well, speaking of a candidate who you didn't mention here, but also one who's been slighted by the Democratic Party, we're learning now that presidential candidate Tulsi Gabbard filed a defamation lawsuit against Clinton over her previous comments, suggesting that Gabbard was a Russian agent. Richard, your response to that. So I actually read the complaint this morning, mm -hmm. um, knowing that I was going to be on. And sure. uh, listen, Hillary never actually used Gabbard's name, but it was implied that it was Gabbard. 
I mean, why is Gabbard suing? What are her damages? When, as a lawyer, because I'm a lawyer first and Democratic, stri right. Democratic uh, strategist second, what are her damages? She, she can't say she didn't get the presidential nomination because of Hillary Clinton. So it's really much about much to do about nothing. It puts Gabbard in the limelight, and essentially it's her way of revenging, which is the court system. But quite frankly, it's filed in New York, and I don't know much, if much is going to be made. 50 million silly. bucks she's suing for. 50 so, million yeah. dollars. So, go, go prove yeah. that, Ms. Gabbard. Yeah. Well, it's good I'll have take Hillary's side of that one. It's good to have an attorney on board to think about that. I want to show you this. Uh, one more topic before we go. Democratic presidential candidate, candidate uh, Pete Buttigieg, having a moment here, apparently having his own uh, please clap moment. Uh, if you missed it, here he is in Iowa now, urging supporters to cheer him on. Let's listen to this. By having better hands guided by better values on those pulleys and levers of American government. So can I look to you to spread that sense of hope to those that you know? Come on. <laughs> Come on. There he goes. Come on. Come on. I guess they missed the moment. I don't know if it was a longer uh, little speech he gave right before there. People fell asleep. Who does this remind you? I think of uh, Jeb Bush. Uh, back in the, you know, back in the day. I'll that. give you that. I'll give you that. It was a joke, a joke apparently that went flat, yeah. and he's asking for some enthusiasm, and he's like, come on, guys. Um, it's a little unfair to get that moment and make a big deal of it. Sure. But, sure. but and, and Mayor Pete is also sort of in the running, even though he is very far left. Um, but it is sort of funny that he said something, and the crowd is asleep, and so he's... Come on. And he was laughing about it. So it was a comical moment. Yeah. But it is pretty funny to grab that moment and say, Mayor Pete, you need a better response. Yeah, what's That's happening right. There? They've got to get those crowds to, to come out. All exactly. Right? Exactly. Democratic strategist Richard Roth, thanks so much for joining us. Thanks for having me.